Everyone say, fruits are signs. Because we tell the Spirit by its fruit, right? Amen. And right now there is, and the Word tells us that more demonic activity would be released. So we're in a realm right now where there's a lot of demonic activity, where the enemy is out provoking. Everyone say provoking. provoking. He provokes. Spirits provoke. They provoke to get fed. So when a spirit provokes, you know, in other words, a dog will provoke you till you feed it. You know, an animal does that. And, and I know my dog, man, I know when she's hungry. She don't leave me. I go from one room to another. She's right on my tail, on my feet. <laughs> and, and no matter what, I'm like, what do you want? And then I realize, oh, you haven't ate yet, or she wants a treat or something to that degree. But there's a want. So many times there, these spirits will come. They provoke us so that we cooperate or we release something to, for, to feed them. Remember, spirits get fed by emotion. Amen? And the only things that spirits don't get fed by is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, which is the love of God. Other than that, demons get fed by emotion. You know? So in this, we've got to discern what kind of spirit it is by the fruit of it. And one of the things that's occurring, and we've talked a little bit about this before, but um, there's a spirit of offense that is tremendously attacking the body of Christ. And um, it's been doing it for multiple generations. The whole thing is, is it's not being recognized enough. And, and the first, we've got a teaching called uh, um, something about the fence of weapons of defense which is against um, some of the areas of contradiction to the arena where offense tries to come. So what we want to do is combat it in multiple arenas. But offense is a spirit. It's, so many times people think it's them. But it's really not us. It's a spirit. And that spirit is associated with provoking. It loves to get fed. So it provokes. It's, it's a protector also. Because it likes to defend self. So would you turn to 1 John chapter, 5, uh, chapter 1, verse 5. Spirit of offense. So it's not a friendly spirit. It's an evil spirit. And it's something that we must recognize. Because if we do not recognize it, it's going to use anyone it can. In verse 5, chapter 1, 1 John, would you read it with me? This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. In other words, he's given us something to utilize. It's a weapon. It's called repentance is a weapon. You know, what is it? It's a weapon to combat sin. So when you make a mistake, when you get offended, it doesn't mean that you won't get offended. It's what you do with it. Amen. It doesn't mean you won't get angry. It depends what you do with it. It doesn't mean that the enemy won't attack you with jealousy. It's what you do with it. Amen? It doesn't mean that he's not going to attack you with anything. It's what you do with it. No matter it's a loss, a desire, anything. It's what you do with it. And if you do not recognize that it's from the enemy, then you're in trouble. 
Amen? That's why it's important to stay filled with the Spirit of God. That's why it's important to stay filled with the Word of God. That's why it's important to stay in fellowship. So we see here, practicing righteousness is a fruit, isn't it? So it's a manifestation of eating of the tree of life. It produces righteousness. And when we're not eating from the tree of life, we're not producing righteousness. Amen. Go to chapter 3 while we're here. In verse 7. Speak it. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. From the devil is sin from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever is born of God does not sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is a message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was the wicked one, and murdered his brother. Why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you, provokes you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So in other words, we must understand that the devil, Satan, the enemy of God, amen, is actually, in this he explains that the devil... We know that Satan, there's a Satan, the word Satan is associated with adversary, amen, because he's an enemy of God. But what he's explaining to me and you is, <laughs> your old man is the devil. Amen. Does everybody get this? Amen. Your old man is the devil. Not that there's not devils and demons and Satan, but your old man is a devil also. Why? Because he was in the image and likeness of the devil. Does everybody get it? That's why you got to be born again. Because what was made for hell? The devils. Amen? So we see here that our old man in its nature is now considered the devil. You know, we don't look at that enough in that arena. Because it is a devil. In other words, devil meaning adversary. I didn't say your old man was a demon. A demon is a disembodied spirit needing a body. I said it's a devil in the arena that it is an enemy of God. Is everybody okay? In Romans 6. If you recall before you were born again, we thought like devils. We acted like devils. <laughs> The word tells us that we lived in darkness. Amen? Amen? I'm sure when you were a child, you were called a devil. <laughs> Amen? I was called a devil. You little devil! Amen. Snap! I thought they were just angry at me, you know? But they were actually telling me the truth. They didn't know they were telling me the truth. They don't know that. They laid hands on me and cast the thing out. You know? <laughs> but anyway, can't cast out self, amen? Even Paul said that. He was struggling. He blamed it on the devil. He said, Lord, do something with the devil's, the Satan has, has, has set something. He's put a stumbling block. He's, he's buffeting me. He says, he's sparing me. Man, I can't take it any longer. What do you want me to do? The Lord says, my grace is sufficient. <laughs> what kind of answer is that? Your grace is efficient. Can't you see the devil? He's got a thorn in my flesh. But see, Paul was finally recognizing that his old man was the devil. Why? Because it's against him. 
It has. That's why the word says in Romans chapter 8 that the carnal mind is enmity towards God and it never can be renewed. Your old man's mind isn't going to be renewed. It will always stay as a devil. It will always hate God. It will always contradict anything that you try to do towards the Lord. That's why you must be born again. So what is there? There must be a separation between your old man and the new man. And that's why it's important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what, you know what separates? The anointing. The anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty separates the old man from the new man. Romans 6, verse 5. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly he also shall be in the, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our what? Old man was crucified with him. Praise God. That the body of sin, come on, he's talking about our old man, might be done away with, and that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. He isn't talking giving up your last breath. He's saying dying to yourself. That's why the word tells us deny yourself. He who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we also shall live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, does dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be what? Dead. Indeed, to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Therefore, do not let sin Reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its what? Lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but to present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin, come on, read it with me. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under what? Grace, which is God's plan to what? Escape. Does everybody get this? So you remember those cartoons that had a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other? And there were those days that you were just an angel? And there were days that you were a devil. Amen. But we didn't have the power at that time as children of ignorance to overcome it. Because we were born in a fallen nature. Amen. We were born... Little devils, <laughs> called little flesh creatures. The old man stays crucified by being led by the Spirit and denying the self-nature because when that doesn't happen, we activate, we allow the old man to take dominion. See, our new spirit should have dominion over the old spirit. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Uh, in other words, that's why we say it's a good day to die. We do not want the self-nature, the old man, to be activated. We want him constantly deactivated. Amen. Ephesians 4. Remember when Jesus told the Pharisees and Sadducees, you are a devil. And you're Father is Satan. Amen? He didn't say you have a demon. He said you're a devil. And, and again, you've, in, in the spirit, you must understand what he talks about is for the devil and a demon. Is everybody okay? And Because sometimes we utilize that word as devils, as demons, amen? And there's nothing wrong with that. But still, a demon is a disembodied spirit from a Nephilim, from fallen angels that came and took women. Amen? But you and I, we were born in darkness. 
which is still associated with the same thing. It comes down the line. See, we don't even realize that we still carry genetic Nephilim. That's why Jesus had to come and change everything. Does everybody get it? Everything was contaminated. All DNA eventually got contaminated. But we're not going into that. But I think I need to reteach that Tuesday because we got really interrupted that night, didn't we? <laughs> I mean, it was like a storm and a half here. Praise God. Ephesians 4.20. Everybody there? Let's speak it. But you have not so learned Christ, the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off what? Concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to what? Deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the New man, which was created according to God in what? True righteousness and holiness. So your old man is not righteous, nor holy, nor can he be. The only thing he can do is stay crucified. Therefore, what is he saying? Okay, now these are some things I want you to do and recognize so that you don't activate the old man. Therefore, put him away what? Lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't what? So he's saying, look, at, I know you're going to get angry. I know you're going to get offended, but what are you going to do with it? Don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the... Now that word should be demons. Has everybody got it? So now we're giving place to demons that try to activate... The old man. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands which uh, what is good, and that he may have something to give him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Why? Because it opens the door, doesn't it? But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Here we go now. How many of y'all know that when offense comes, bitterness is there? He says, let all bitterness, wrath, and anger. Do you understand, when you begin to look at this, all of this is surrounded by offense. Without being offended, these things don't manifest. These are actually fruits of offense. Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. All of those are fruits of offense. It's speaking, uh, evil speaking. Be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. The old man is corrupted, lives on deceitful loss. It, it hates its anger. Um, it says, don't, don't get, so we're not to give voice to these demons that activate the devil in us, the old man. Amen. And this is an area where we've got to be more sensitive and recognizing. I see many people fall. I see places divided because of offense. It's an offense when somebody takes hold of offense and allows bitterness and everything. It's a, it's a sign of immaturity. In Galatians 5, in verse 19. Now, in, in verse 19, it says, and the works of the flesh, but these are the works of the old man. Now, the works of the old man are <laughs> evident, which are what? Is everybody there? Ephesians 5, 19. Speak it with me. Which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, 
heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and anything like it, these fruits, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because your old man does not inherit the kingdom of God. It cannot, and it will not. That's why when you are not born in Christ, those people don't go home. Does everybody get it? So these are the works of the old man. In other words, again, these are things that are practiced, so they're not taking dominion over it, are they? There's not a fruit of righteousness here. There's no dominion here. When somebody practices these things, have you ever been around somebody who's miserable? They're always angry and bitter. In fact, they look for an excuse to be offended. Well, they got demons. Amen? They got demons. And, and in that arena, many people lose their healing and their deliverance by offense. Because the enemy knows. They lose their deliverance and their healings by the spirit of offense. Matthew 15. This must be dealt with. Again, what's the cure? You repent. It's real simple. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Don't justify it. Don't reason with it. And it doesn't matter whether you were right. Amen. But you don't know. Amen. Who cares? You manifested the fruits of a devil. Amen. You just disqualified yourself, disconnected from God, Amen. and you need to get reconnected again. Amen. God doesn't look at why you did it. Does everybody understand that? He looks at, why did you allow it? See some, but God, people go to, but Lord, you know what my circumstance was. He said, I know, but you still did it. Why did you allow it? Flesh creatures. Matthew fifteen ten. Is everybody there? I said, when Jesus had called a multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear. Everyone say, Hear. hear. And understand. Say it again. Hear. hear. And understand. understand. Say it again. Hear. hear. And understand. understand. One more time. Hear and understand. Praise God. Not what goes into your mouth defiles a man. Are you ready for this? But what comes out of your mouth, this defiles the man. You know, did you ever see those water fountains that you have to go step on it, and then you wait for the water to come. It's like a demon comes up to people, steps on their foot, and they go, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and they say all kinds of stuff, because the spirit of fence has come, it activates the old man, they're just spewing out all kinds of garbage, spitting on themselves and, and everything else around them, and every devil from hell is coming and going, feed me. Yes, and they call one another, yo! Come on. And then you know what they do? More come and provoke. Then you got the spirit of reasoning. You got the spirit of compromise. You got the spirit of not only offense and every other spirit, anger, hatred, bitterness. Man, they're all coming and they're getting fed. And you're getting skinny and they're getting heavier. <laughs> and what happens is in, you're actually allowing them to feed your old man that's taking dominion over your new man. Not what goes in your mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of your mouth defiles. Then, look at verse 12. Now watch this. Then his disciples came and said 
Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when you said these things? Oh, your sayings? And, and, and Jesus answered and said, Every plant which my fa heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into the ditch. Whoa. The spirit of offense is a provoking spirit that activates the old nature to defile the new nature, causing a disconnect and disqualification. Disqualification and disconnect for what? God's blessing, his favor, and protection. Again, it reopens the door and a person can lose healing and deliverance. Without a quick repentance... See, the longer it takes to repent, the more the door stays open. Amen. The more contamination comes. Amen. And the longer it takes to connect. Does everybody understand that? It's like when you miss the, uh, uh, an exit. <laughs> you're drawing, whew, snap. Then you got to go all the way somewhere. And you know what you got to do? turn around, come all the way back, and get off the exit. And hope you make it on time where you're supposed to be going. Don't miss the bus. Matthew 24. Spirit of offense. There's not one person in here that's not been offended. It's what you do with it. That's why he says, cast your cares upon for me because I care for you. You get rid of it. You get rid of it. No, nope, I ain't going there. Idiot. See, you got to be careful. You may not go there, but you still hold bitterness. Then you're still there. Amen. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of boneheads out there, but praise God. Matthew 24, verse 9. It says, And then they will deliver you up to tribulation and will kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And Jesus said, And many will be what? Offended. And will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will what? Grow cold, but he who endures to the end will be what? Saved. Saved. So again, we, look at, we're hard pressed all over. There's more demonic activity constantly being released. Offense is, con man, you turn on the TV, you can easily get offended. Somebody leaves you a text and says something. People hate being corrected. When people hate being corrected, it's, that's, the new man should love to be corrected. The old man hates being corrected. So you'll know whether you're in the spirit or in the flesh. Because when a correction comes, you go, thank you. I didn't see that. But some people, oh, really? You need to look at yourself. Oh, snap. That's a person in the carnal arena. Why? Because they, they're always thinking how to get to the other person to justify their own. What right do you have to tell me this? That's an idiot. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> More influence of demonic agitation <laughs> to provoke offense, which is bitterness and unforgiveness. It brings harm to the new nature, allowing the old man dominion and losing freedom from self, losing freedom from the world. Does everybody get this? Why? Because then they get reattached to the old man again, and then they get reattached to the world again. It's a sure sign of immaturity. We are there. We are in the last days. This is what's happening. This is in the Matthew 24, it's where the disciples came and said, Lord, what are the signs of the end? And he told them. Then he's going to be offended. There'll be more 
hypocrisy, bigotry, offense, hatred, jealousy, rage, and flesh, and all that off. Offense will change the course of a person's life. Amen. And they don't even realize it. Ch offense changes a course of a person's life if they allow it to linger. Why? Because what happens is it, it, it corrupts. And by corrupting with another things that corrupts, it corrupts an attitude, intense motives, and even desires. You know, many people will say, I have a right to be offended. Wrong. That's a lie from hell. No one has a right to be offended. Jesus was not offended. In fact, when he was on the cross, he had a full right to be offended. They crucified an innocent man. And what did he say? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Oh, that's the character of Christ. And Luke 17. Hallelujah. And verse 1. Luke 17, verse 1. Let's speak it. Then he said to his disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. In other words, someone who's holding on to it. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. That's a younger one. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. Man, you rebuke a brother, you just sit and they really go off. Because they're carnal, immature. That's the state of a person's being. They're in the old man. Listen, there, there's an area where, let me share a, another arena. There are, there are, I've seen offense to where, oh, it's okay. They, they say, oh, it's okay, but they see, the, you can't just say it's okay. There's correction that's supposed to come. Oh, it's okay, things will just, you know, no, correction comes. Why? Because there's correction and direction. You can't just say it's okay. You got to take care of it. Amen. Especially when correction comes. It must be taken care of. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Verse 3 again. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. Praise God. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, slap him. And repent yourself. <laughs> now don't, don't take that, okay. <laughs> if he sins against you seven times a day, seven times in a day, returns you. But it says returns you saying, forgive me. He repents. See, repentance says, would you please forgive me? Because if the longer it takes, the further you got to go and turn around. Amen. He says, and you, if he repents, you shall forgive him. No big deal. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because you release yourself. Amen. That's when people do not forgive and repent they don't release themselves and it's still an attachment no matter where they go for years there's still people that are bitter Amen. bitter and still holding on to it and they don't even know i forgave them but i hate them Amen. the heck <laughs> i've given it to god but i still hate them Amen. hallelujah Remember, our brothers and sisters are the ones that do the will of God. Amen? That's his will. That's his will, that we repent quickly. Hold nothing. Let it go. A person that's still... Listen, everybody's gone through stuff. Even when people were abused when they were young. So what? Amen. You're a new creation in Christ. Why are you still holding on to it? Amen. But you don't understand. I don't want to. 
It doesn't matter. Cut it and go on. You know how many people get offended because they don't get what they want? Amen. But I want it now. Oh, you religious little demon. <laughs> God knows exactly when we need things. Hallelujah. You know, so somebody comes and paints your house and you pay them and you come home, you're out of town, you found out that they painted the house the wrong color. You definitely want to be offended. In fact, you might want to shoot them. But you know what you got to do? Forgive them and thank the Lord for changing the color. And depart. <laughs> Before you hurt yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews 12. Hebrew. Hebrews 12. Verse 14. Praise God. Let's speak it together. What does it say? Pursue peace with all people and what? Holiness with, with, without which no one will what? See the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this, many become what? Defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, it was too late. He was rejected, for he found no place for re what? Repentance. Though he sought it diligently, with he cried, but he never asked for forgiveness. That's all he was wanting was what? The blessing. He cried for the blessing. He did not cry for repentance. Has everybody got it? In other words, you and I must continue on the path and be careful because many people have sold their birthright. They've actually, by holding on to what? Offense and bitterness. They've sold their birthright because it causes a disconnect from God and it causes a disconnect from God's favor. Amen? Then what happens is the old man steps in and takes over. Amen? And man, you know what happens when that happens. All hell breaks out. In James chapter 1. What does that say? But blessed is the man who endures these provoking attempts. And temptations. For when he has been approved, ha, oh, you think God checks you out when that happens? Yeah. So you're either going to gain his trust or what? Lose it. And it will come around again because God wants you, he wants that trust to be gained and earned. Amen? For he who has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his what? Own desires and what? Enticed. And when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings death. So blessed is the man that avoids to be provoked to offense. Amen? Blesses that person. In Proverbs 3. Are you getting this? You know it's coming, right? <laughs> come on, the Holy Spirit always gets the stuff to come. you either gotten in it, coming out of it, or you're going in it. So don't go in it. <laughs>
Proverbs 3 and verse 1. Let's speak this together. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding and reasoning. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. What does it say? Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. And then honor the Lord with your possessions. Boy, a lot of people get offended when they're missing a buck fifty out of their $2,000 check. That's it. People get easily offended, man, especially over money. Oh, my gosh. See, you know why? They think they're working for themselves. Then that's flesh. See, that's the old man. The old man works for self. The new man works from labors for the Lord. There's a difference. Oh, they shorted my check. Ah! Flesh creature. Honor the Lord with your possessions with the first fruits of all of your increase. Many people don't do that. They just, thank you, Lord. Do you know of all of your increase? You're to honor the Lord. Well, how do you honor the Lord? You give. Amen. You give to the house of God Amen. with your increases. I got a raise today. Praise God. I got a bonus today. Praise God. That's mine. No. On your increase, you're to give something to God to let him know. Thank you. Why? Because you want more increases coming. Oh, what, let's get it. Honor the Lord your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase, so what? Your barns will be what? Filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Man, I love to be drunk. But I drink from above. Amen. My son don't what? Despise the chastening of the Lord nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects just as a father of the son in whom he delights. Oh, Hallelujah. Fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. See, if there really is that connection, you depart from it. You don't want anything to do with it. Even though you want to have something to do with it. Has everybody got it? You still depart. You do not allow your emotions to dictate your mouth. Amen? Amen? First Timothy 6. Oh, you poor little Gucci goo. See, people use the word hurt for offense. Hello? But I think I was hurt by them. No, you got offended, homie. <laughs> hurts when you run into a wall. That hurts. <laughs> Hurts when you're coming down the stair and miss the last four. That hurts. <laughs> yeah. Or when you're bending down to get something, you hit your head in the counter. Oh, that hurts. Amen. Many things that hurt, but people use the hurt for offense. But we've got to recognize these things. Amen? What did I say to go to 1 Timothy 6? <laughs> In verse uh, 3. Oh, snap. Let's start verse 1. Let as many bond servants as... Is everybody there? As are under the yoke, count their own masters worthy of all honor, so that the name of God and his doctrine may not be blasphemed. And those who have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather serve them because those who are benefited are believers and beloved. 
teach and exhort these things. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the doctrine which accords to godliness, he is what? Proud. Knowing nothing but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reveling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such withdraw yourself. Now godliness with content is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Amen? Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. People fight for their possessions like they're going to take it home when they die. <laughs> Verse 12. Proverbs 14, 12, please. Let's speak it. There is a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way of death. Even in laughter, the heart may sorrow. And the end of mirth may what? Be what? Grief. Even, um, the backslider in heart will be what? Filled with his own ways. But a good man will be satisfied from above. The simple believer's Every, the simple believes what? The simple believes what? Every word. But the prudent considers well his steps. A wise man fears and does what? Departs from evil. But a fool rages and is self-confident. A quick-tempered man acts foolishly. And a man of wicked intentions is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The evil will bow before the good, and the wicked are at the gates of the righteous. Proverbs 16. In verse 3. Let's speak it. Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. The Lord has made all for himself, yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. In other words, repentance is provided, isn't it? And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues without justice. Again, we must maintain a defense from offense. Amen? But the first thing is by recognizing the intent and attitude and motives. If we're, that's why we must always search ourselves all the time. Amen? And I want to close at 1 John chapter 5. In verse 14. Let's read it. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, people need to highlight that, his will. So when you're asking something according to his will, Amen. He hears us. Amen. Amen. If we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life from those who commit sin not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. Amen. You don't pray about something that's... So you see a brother that's just someone that's not doing, doing the, the right thing. In other words, divine order. You know, anything that's not a faith is sin. 
right? So you see someone that's not, you pray for them, amen? And you can always, it, when God's time comes, you can always bring it up. But then there's a time when a person is downright not doing what's supposed to be done and breaking covenant, well, you go tell them, amen? You go tell them. In verse 17, it says what? All righteousness is sin, and there is sin not leading to death. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God, what? Keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. We know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols and from offense. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray today, Lord, that the seed be imparted in each and every one, be protected by the blood of the Lamb, and grow and bear fruit for your glory. Again, we ask for your forgiveness and mercies and grace that every time we've been offended, and Lord, that we may be quick to repent and slow to anger. Help us, Lord. Help us to see things all the way through. As we labor on to you, we commit all things to you, and we look to you as our hope, our strength, our life, our healer, our deliverer, our provider, our perfecter, and our friend. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.